Okay, two integrals on the spot. The first one is the integral of square root of 1 plus x squared over x. And for the second one, it's just a reciprocal. So, maybe one of them is easier than the other. Well, I don't know. You tell me. As always, please pause the video and do the easier one first. Alright, which one's easier? You guys should tell me this one, right? Because in here, we can just let u equal to 1 plus x squared, and the derivative of that is 2x, and we have this x on the top to help us out. So let's go ahead and do that. u equal to 1 plus x squared, and du is equal to the derivative of that, which is 2x dx, and divided by 2x on both sides, so we get dx equals to du over 2x. And now we can take this integral to the u world. This is equal to the integral x on the top over square root. And this whole thing is the u. And then the dx is this, which is du over 2x. And the best thing right here is that the x and x cancel each other out. Well, we do have a 1 over 2. So let's bring that to the front because that's just a constant multiple. And then we have the integral. And notice, we have the square root in the denominator. So I will write that as the negative one half power because this square root is in the denominator. So I will write this as u to the negative one half power. And then of course, we are in the u world. And then right here, I'm just going to add one, which is going to give me positive one half and divided by positive one half, it's the same as saying multiply by one half. I mean, multiply by two over one. <laughs> so you see that 1 half and 2 over 1 cancel, and this is just u to the 1 half power, and of course, 1 half power is the same as the square root, and the u is that guy, which is 1 plus x squared, and we are done, so put plus c, right? So that's it. Now, let's come back to here. Attention to the inside. Here we have 1 plus x squared, and we know 1 plus tangent squared theta, that will give us theta squared, right? So this right here is a tangent situation. I will begin by saying that x equal to, and since we just have a one, so I'll just put down one times tangent theta. And of course, once we have this, we continue as usual, differentiate both sides. So we get dx equals to, the derivative of that is secant squared theta d theta. And then we take this into the theta world. We see this is equal to the integral, and we have square root. 1 is 1 plus x is tangent, so I'll just put down tangent theta, and then we square that. I'll put a square right here. And then we divide it by x right here. It's once again tangent theta, so I'll put this down right here. And a lot of people, when they drive, they don't put on seatbelt, and that's really dangerous. Don't do that. And a lot of people, when they integrate, they don't put down dx or d theta or du, whatever. It's just as dangerous, so don't do that. Be sure you pay attention to the dx. Well, we found out dx is secant squared theta d theta. So be sure you write this down. And I will do so right here. Secant squared theta d theta. And now from here, we will be using the identity. And as we can see in the As we can see in the uh, inside of the square root, here we have 1 plus tangent square theta, and we can write that as secant square theta. And let me just do that right here. So this is the integral, and we have the square root. And the inside, I will just put down secant square theta. And then, of course, let's just write down the rest. Here we have tangent, and here we have another secant square theta, d theta. Well, when we are doing tricks up, I'm just going to cancel the square and then the square root. Don't worry about the absolute value, all right? Don't worry about the absolute value, just for integration purpose. The function part is the main thing. So we see that this is just equal to the integral, and let me do the following. Let me just write this as secant theta, as how it is, right? Because we cancel the square and the square root. And I will divide it by tangent theta, and yes, I have another secant squared theta here. And if you just put this down, you may have to think about, hmm, how are you going to be integrating this guy, right, in the theta world? You may want to try to write everything sine cosine, that be, maybe that works. 
Or maybe you want to use some identities and things like that. And maybe I will just you know, leave again. How would you continue from here, right? Okay, so hopefully you guys seriously all try this on your own. And this is how we are actually going to do it, right? And maybe you did it in a different way, that's fine. But this is my way of doing it. I see that we have secant square theta, and once again, we'll be using identity. This right here, it's the same as saying tangent square theta plus one. And then let me just put down the d theta here. And the reason that I want to do that, it's because I can look at this part and then do this divide by that and then plus this divided by that. And that will be really wonderful. So let me show you. This right here is the integral. And perhaps I will just write down the secant theta here first. And then when we multiply by this portion. And I will write this down as tangent square theta. And then let me write it as over tangent theta and then I add it with 1 over tangent theta, right? And we're just doing some identities business and then, you know, just do some uh, work on that. And the beauty of doing this is that, you see, tangent theta and this right here cancel each other out. So we just have... <laughs> this is why I still cannot hold three markers in one hand. But anyway, this is to the first power now, right? And then for this guy, you may want to write this as cotangent if you would like, or you can now change this to sine cosine if you would like. And perhaps I will actually just look at this. We know 1 over tangent theta is cotangent. In another word, this is the same as saying cosine theta over sine theta. Okay? So they are the same thing. Anyway, we'll continue. This right here now is the integral. And let me distribute the secant theta to here. So I have secant theta times tangent to the first power theta. And that's something that we can integrate, right? Say yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and then I will be multiplying secant theta with this. And let me just write down the plus first. And because I wrote down 1 over tangent theta as cosine theta over sine theta, let me also write secant theta as 1 over cosine theta. And the beauty of doing this is that, you see, when you do this times that, the cosine can sort each other out. So we just get 1 on the top over sine theta on the bottom. And as we all know, 1 over sine theta is cosecant theta, right? So I will also just be writing that down right here. This is cosecant theta. And we're actually ready to integrate, so I will close the integral. And we see that the integral of secant theta times tangent theta, this is just secant theta because the derivative of this is just that, right? So that's nice. Then the integral of cosecant theta, this is also a standard integral. And right here, I will just write down the answer for you guys. And you guys can check out the description for the link to the solution if you'd like to know. Anyway, the integral of that is natural log absolute value cosecant theta, and then we minus cotangent theta. And in fact, there are like two different forms of this right here, but this right here is a standard result, right? Okay, so we did integration already. Now, it's our job to go back to the x world. And to do so, we have to come back here and utilize this equation again. So, as you can see, we have tangent theta is equal to x right here, right? So I'll just put this down. Tangent theta is equal to x. But I'm going to look at this equation and try to draw a triangle. And to do so, I will look at x as x over 1. Because this way, I will see this on the top is just opposite, and the bottom is the adjacent. And to come with the right triangle, and once again, you should always draw your right triangle this way, and put the angle here, just to be consistent. Anyway, opposite is x right here, and adjacent is just 1. And the hypotenuse is from here to here. And a quick and dirty way to do this is you open the square root. And if it's a hypotenuse, you just add the square of this and that. And I'll put down 1 square plus x square. And of course, this is just 1. 
Anyway, finally, we can actually go back to the X world. We see that this right here is equal to, first, we have secant theta, and secant is what? Hypotenuse over adjacent, meaning we just have this over one, and over one doesn't matter. So I will just write down square root of one plus x squared, and then we will be adding this with the natural log of absolute value, and we have to do cosecant theta. Well, cosecant theta is this over that. So I'll just put down square root of 1 plus x squared over x. And then we will have to subtract cotangent theta is adjacent over opposite. So we just do 1 over x. And this right here is it. I'll put on the plus C at the end of all the work. And this right here is the answer, all right? So once again, leave a comment down below and let me know, do you guys like the theta world or do you guys like the U world? And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And thank you guys so much for subscribing and watching. Anyway, this is it.